Craig, we know that to explain stuff in the world, we have different laws or regularities on different levels, the most fundamental level, and uh, physics, and then chemistry, biology, or if you're going to go up to cosmology. And we know that although everything is made of the things below it, we can't, at least at this time, explain everything without this concept of emergence. There has to be some new ideas or laws or whatever makes things work at different levels that we can't explain. So this concept of emergence. But I want to know, is that emergence something fundamental or just some lack of current knowledge? I think that emergence is not, is not something fundamental. But, well, it depends what you mean by emergence. If we talk about the emergence of a description instead of laws being appropriate, then I think that that happens you know, when we cluster together a bunch of particles or blips in a field and we look at it from a higher, le higher level. Uh, if we coarse grain and coarse grain, um, then it might be appropriate to describe the world at some, uh, with different laws, with different concepts. So we take some law, say, in ecology. Ecology will posit laws giving the reproduction rates of rabbits, say. Well, now all those rabbits are composed of a bunch of particles. And those particles are obeying, presumably, the physical laws. Well, now those, those particles, they could go anywhere. You know, they could be, if we're thinking classically, there could be all sorts of just, you know, any types of forces and that on them. And so you can ask yourself the question, well, how do those particles know to be, behave in bunny-like behaviors? How do they know to stay together like that? And how do they know even f furthermore to, you know, to, to go along in the trajectory such that they reproduce just the way ecologists do? So it's really a kind of puzzle. My own thinking about that is actually just to see that the puzzle's symmetrical in a way, in the ecology, from the point of view of ecology, they'll have these reproduction rates for rabbits, but they won't talk about why rabbits always fall, you know, why they all fall down rather than fall up. And so there's a kind of conspiracy among the rabbits to make the laws of physics true as well. And so there's this kind of harmony between the two, which as far as we know, if you try to, if you assume that, you know, what, what a rabbit really is, a bunch of particles, which I do, and, and by the way, I could be repeating myself for life or uh, uh, heat or sure, all sorts of sure. macroscopic things that seem law-like. They have to be consistent with one another. And to do that, you need to posit, it seems like you need to posit these very, very special initial conditions uh, of the universe. Well, l l let's try to unpack this. So if we have bunnies reproducing and they're all just made of particles, nuclei and electrons and all different fields and everything. So th there are two things that are going on, made really simple. One is that these particles are obeying the most fundamental laws of gravity, so the bunny stays on the, on the Earth, it doesn't fly up. They're all obeying that law. But then they're also obeying bunny laws, which is how bunnies look, and they're white, and they have ears, and they, how they reproduce, and quickly, and times, and all of that. So it, it sounds like the particles become schizophrenic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how do they know? <laughs> and so they're being... Well, uh, that's the concept like, of emer being... emergence. Emergence says that the bunny laws, as you nicely put it, are these emergent properties that emerge that you could never predict based on the fundamental particles. So the reductionist uh, a scheme project over the years fails because emergence brings fundamental laws to these new levels, not just lack of understanding of how the particles work together for, to make bunny bunny behavior, but fundamentally there are different kinds of laws that are almost as fundamental as the physical laws. Yeah, the way I think of reduction is I would distinguish two things. I would distinguish uh, uh, ontological reduction, and so the question of Fundamental what composes being. the higher level creature, and then I would say reductionism, you know, the evidence seems to point to the truth of reductionism, that the, you know, if we look under a microscope or, you know, we slam, well, I don't want to think about slamming bunnies in an accelerator, but, uh, you know, we would see that they're composed of particles. But then there's another notion which I would, you know, say, call uh, explanatory reductionism. You know, do you get the same warm, fuzzy feeling of explanation from an explanation of uh, the reproduction rates of rabbits when you hear it in terms of quantum field theory? Well, I really doubt it. Uh, 
even just, you know, if I tried to explain to you in terms of quantum field theory why uh, round pegs don't go in square holes, <laughs> you know, it's not going to feel like you've got much of an explanation. The question may be for round pegs and square holes that a simple quantum explanation can work because it's, but when you deal with something on, on this uh, a level of life, it may be then that you have new laws that are emergent that can, in principle, not be predicted uh, based on fundamental laws, whereas something simple um, uh, could be. Is, is, oh, maybe. Does, is that possible? That's possible. But that, if that's uh, possible, that's really a fundamental new fact about how the, the universe works. If that's possible. The alternative explanation well, is, that, is that we just have uh, a lack of knowledge, and then if we had complete knowledge, however difficult or almost impossible that may be, a complete knowledge of every particle, every quantum state, we could predict ultimately in a trillion, you know, million years what, what the behavior of those particles would be. The other issue is that we can never do that because there are emergent laws which are fundamental that you could never predict. Yeah, I, I think there are emergent laws. Um, but I, I guess uh, since I'm kind of deflationist about what laws are in the first place, so if you think of it, laws as a kind of elegant summary of, of things, then, then, there's, then the thing that's new isn't so much a new thing in the world, but more a, a new description, a new elegant summary of things. And so that you've got an elegant summary at the lower level, you've got an elegant summary at the higher level, you need them, you want them to harmonize, but there's not like a new thing in the world. So that would mean that by having this deflationary approach to laws, where it's more of a summary than some fundamental thing existing, the difference between what happens at the fundamental level and the bunny level is not that significant. That's right.